Hello friends, uh, today's lecture will be on a very important topic uh, that is a non-destructive testing. For any industry, these are the techniques sometimes used for quality control also. So, before any component goes out of the uh, company, uh, you have a quality control division and in quality control divisions, a uh, lot of these techniques are used to find out if there is any flaw in the component, okay, so that it should not go to, to the customer if, if, if any defects are present uh, beyond a certain uh, limit, then it should not be uh, sold. Okay, so, it will be rejected and again it can be processed. So, non-destructive testing is a one of the very important uh, uh, idea to understand here. Okay, and uh, I have clubbed uh, this lecture with another measurement called hardness measurement. It can be used as a, some kind of quality control or some kind of NDT kind of thing, but uh, this is a very important measurement uh, as such okay, to find out or to have some idea about the mechanical properties of the material. Okay. So, non-destructive testing is a wide group of analysis technique used in industry to evaluate the properties of a material, component or system without causing damage. So, this is one of the most important aspect of the NDT techniques or NDT testing. If you do any tensile test for example, you have to take out a sample and you have to destroy the sample during the test, it will fracture. Similarly, impact testing if you do it is going to fracture the sample. So, you will know about the defects or about the properties of the material by doing some destructive testing. Okay. So, when you have a component which you cannot destroy, you want, just want to know that if there are defects uh, present and what is the size of these defects, whether these defects are critical or not. A very small defect which, which is in micron size for example or even in uh, some micron size may be is not may be not a critical defect. Okay. So, under your stress condition, under your uh, service conditions, okay, maybe this defect is of not uh, of any criticality. Okay. You have to understand that in any any material at any point of uh, time or a, a after any processing, there is always going to be some defects in the material. Okay. So, that you cannot avoid, defects are always going to be there in the material. As, a, as an engineer, our purpose is to find out whether these defects are uh, critical or not. Okay. Maybe I can live with this defect okay. or it is like uh, you have some disease, okay. some disease are like uh, you just take medicine and you can live, uh, live throughout your life without with that disease, but just by taking medicine. Or if that disease is not able to, you cannot uh, cure that by a medicine, okay, it is it cannot be managed by the medicine, then maybe some operation you have to do. Okay. So, this is the same kind of idea that some defects will always going to be there. Whether I will be able to live with that defect in the given service condition, that is what we have to find out. Okay, so, my I, ca I cannot keep testing each uh, component and keep it destroying for every uh, test. Okay. So, my point is to find out whether any defect is present there, what is the number of these defects in a given volume and what is the size of defect uh, okay, and whether it is critical or not. Okay. So, basically NDT does not permanently alter the article being evaluated. So, you do not change anything the dimension or any property or nothing. Okay. We just check whether the defects are there or not. It is a highly valuable technique that can save both money and time in product evaluation. So, basically you can do a quality control using this NDT technique. You can do troubleshooting and of course, in research also it is a very important technique to use. Importance, it is basically carried out to de determine defects in a material or component such as cracks, porosity, etcetera. Why we want to know these defects? Because they will degrade your properties uh, of a material and it may lead to failure of a material. So, if the that defect is of a critical size and under the given stress condition in which your uh, this component is going to be used, 
uh, this crack can be can start propagating ok. So, I want to see whether this crack is of uh, critical dimension or much lower than that. Defects developed during service life can damage the component can cause lo lo loss of lives ok. So, NDT is not only for components which are going out of a uh, industry ok as a quality control tool. It is a very important technique to find out whether if any component is used under service whether still it has uh, some life remaining ok. For example, some bridges uh, railway bridges for example, are made uh, 50 years back ok. Now, I am not sure whether during this uh, many years of service life ok, whether some defects are introduced in the material due to so much loading continuously ok. There is a fatigue loading continuous movement of uh, trains for example. So, I want to know whether I have to demolish this bridge and make a new bridge or I can use this bridge for another let us say 10 years ok. Now, how to find out that? So, the, the the way to find out that is you do some NDT measurements uh, non destructive testing find out if there are any flaws present and whether these flaws are of uh, critical dimension or not ok. Similarly, you will see a lot of these NDT uh, kind of uh, techniques are used in uh, finding out if any railway track is uh, damaged or not. Okay, you must have seen sometimes uh, uh, some people are pushing a cart over the over the railway track and they have some kind of instrument uh, mounted on that. So, they are doing uh, and non-destructive testing of the of the railway track and trying to see that because of the usage if any flaws are uh, uh, have been introduced during the service. Okay and uh, whether uh, these are of critical nature or not. So, if, if they found out that ok this track is not uh, uh, can be not be used anymore, they will remove that much part and put a new railway track there and do the welding and so on ok. So, it is one of the important technique for any component which is going out of the industry and it is a very important technique to find out if any component which is in the service ok, whether uh, during the service it has in, uh, we have introduced any defects in the component ok and whether they are of critical nature or not. So, origin of these defects can be during the processing of material ok, uh, in terms of metallurgical engineering if you see. So, either it can be during casting, welding, forging, extrusion and so on or it can develop during the secondary processing of material. So, for example, machining ok, grinding, heat treatment etcetera or it can de develop during the use of material. So, in service uh, you can have, so may be due to corrosion the material is exposed to a corroded environment ok and corrosion is introducing some defects in the material or due to fatigue loading uh, as we told you that during fatigue loading you can initiate some cracks ok or erosion process. So, there are a lot of ways in which you can introduce defects during service ok. So, in these three cases we want to know whether the uh, any defects are there and what is the dimension of those defects. So, if we look at the NDT techniques uh, one is of course, visual ins inspection ok. A lot of time you must have seen when the train is uh, coming to the station people keep changing uh, checking the, the on big station they check the temperature of the wheel and they kind of do some uh, 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 hammering kind of thing just to kind of see uh, check the sound ok, whether uh, uh, if, if any defect is there or not uh, and everything is all right or not ok. So, these are visual inspection you just go visually check whether uh, you are seeing ex extensive deformation for example, in some certain structural component ok. You just by visual inspection you can see there is a sagging in some part. So, there is one visual inspection ok that is that depends on the experience of the engineer and uh, uh, his uh, analytical or uh, practical skills which he can use there itself. Then another is called liquid penetrant test. So, we will see each one of them now a magnetic particle test, eddy current test, ultrasonic test and radiographic test. So, liquid penetrant test if you see 
okay for example these are for surface cracks okay so you can see and we already know that surface cracks are the critical uh, defects okay because it you will have maximum uh, stresses on the surface and it can easily uh, propagate uh, these surface defects can easily propagate under the uh, surface condition so if you have surface cracks like this an open crack okay what we will do i will show you the steps in the next slide okay so this is the liquid penetrant test is a simple entity method for finding defects open to the surface of a solid the die make flower size appear larger for easy detection so basically liquid means we we, we use dye uh, some uh, some color okay and that we try to we try to enhance the size of the defect by this uh, dyes uh, the liquid which we are going to use okay so that it can be easily seen by naked eye or maybe by some uh, magnifying uh, apparatus so basically first is the surface preparation you will do uh, for whichever component you want to do this kind of testing okay then we will apply the liquid or the dye on this surface it can be applied by spraying or brushing whatever then this dye will penetrate okay so you have to give some time for it to penetrate these are liquid it will penetrate through the crack okay so you have to leave it for a sufficient time to allow it to enter the defect then you remove the excess dye from the surface okay so after the after this penetration in the within the defect the rest of the dye is removed here okay so it is now removed so that now you can apply the developer okay so now the developer is applied on the surface okay so what it does is it draw the penetrant out okay for on the surface so now this was the size of the defect okay when the dye from within the defect is taken out by the developer okay so now this is the size of the dye okay so that small crack is kind of expanded by using this dry not expanded the only the visually it is now seen as a bigger thing okay which can be easily uh, seen by a naked eye okay so the developer's work is to draw the dye out from the uh, uh, from the defect or the crack okay and to uh, spread it on the surface of the sample so that now you will have a bigger area okay where this dye will be there and that will give you an indication that below this there is go, there is some defect okay so this is a liquid penetrant test a very quick way to find out if there is any crack uh, or any defect on the surface of the uh, material or component another uh, for uh, uh, materials which show magnetic properties okay the it is called magnetic particle test okay so basically fine iron particles coated with a dye pigment okay are applied to the test specimen now we 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 will magnetize the component first okay so what will happen we know that if there is any defect present okay so this is a open uh, surface or, or it is open to the air so now this uh, uh, magnet the whole magnet is divided into two magnets now so you will have additional two poles coming here one is south pole another is north pole because your magnetic uh, lines are disrupted here so wherever you have this kind of defect th there is a leakage field uh, due to that so your particle will cluster around these discontinuities okay because you will have a additional magnetic poles here wherever the defects are there and this indication can be visually detected under proper lighting conditions okay so this magnetic particles will accumulate wherever the uh, there is a disruption in the magnetic field okay and that will be because of if any cracks are there you will have additional poles coming because of the uh, crack and for example if i take a magnet like this okay it will have south pole and north pole and suppose i break it into two parts so now i have two magnets okay one is again this is south this will become north and this will be south and this will be north okay so whenever you if you keep on dividing that you will get additional magnets okay with two poles 
So the same thing is happening here when the crack is there. So locally you will have now two poles, additional poles and there will be a disruption in the magnetic field. So there is a leakage field here and, the, and my magnetic particle will accumulate here and that can be easily seen by a naked eye that uh, those magnetic particles are kind of arranged in particular fashion. So you will be able to know that what is the shape of the defect and so on. Okay. The another type of test is called eddy current test. Okay. So basically whenever you have alternating current flowing through a coil, okay, so there will be a magnetic field around that coil because of the alternating magnetic field. And this magnetic field when you bring this coil close to another uh, conductor, you will generate the eddy currents in, in the, uh, in the uh, another component because of the alternating current in the coil. You have magnetic field around that and may that magnetic field will, will induce an electric current in the conductor and these will be in form of eddies. Okay. So eddies means uh, you must have seen in a flowing river you sometimes see that uh, the water is rotating uh, in a uh, rapidly in one direction and these are called eddies. Okay. So similar electric current eddies will be uh, induced in the component. Okay. And when the, the, these eddy currents are moving, they also uh, affect the uh, affect the uh, impedance of the coil. Okay, so if any defect is there, and because of that there is any change in the path of the eddy currents, that will uh, be seen as an impedance in the coil. Okay, and that can be characterized and used to find out if there is any defect or any local deformity is there in the material. Okay. Uh, it has to be calibrated, it cannot be done just like that. You have to calibrate it uh, for a given material and then you will be able to see whether there are any defects in the material at a particular location. Okay. So th this is how the, the eddy current uh, test can be used to find out the sur defects near the surface. Okay. You do not have to be very open to the surface, it can be a subsurface defect also which can be easily find out with the eddy current. And in fact, you can also find out if there is any material composition variation in the material. Okay. The another one is ultrasonic test. Okay. So basically, a ultrasonic probe is there which sends the ultrasonic wave uh, in the material. Okay. So it will go and wherever any open surface is there. Okay, it will, uh, so the ultrasonic wave will easily travel in the material, but it will be find difficult to travel in the open atmosphere or a, any, any gap if it is there, no, no material is there. So it gets reflected from that and again it will be detected by the, uh, by the probe. So it's, it, is a, it is a receiver as well as a transmitter. So the ultrasonic wave goes. if material is ending here, it will get reflected and it will be seen by the probe. So the time it takes to travel that can be easily, you can do a calibration that it, this much time should be taken by a wave to uh, strike the other surface and come back. Now if any flaw or defect is there, then it will come in a shorter time. Okay, then whatever time it takes to go to the end of the uh, uh, surface and come back. Okay, so now we will know that what, what is the depth at which the flaw is there and what is the size of the flaw. So this is a very good technique to find any flaws which are well within the material, not on the surface. Okay. So the ultrasonic wave will go and when it hits back and come back that can be used to find out that what is the depth of this flaw and when you move the probe you will also know that what is the size of this flaw. Okay, so a very good technique to find out the flaws which are well within the material and not on the surface. The radiography is another test okay, and uh, you, no, maybe uh, no, not you but you must have seen around you okay, if any uh, small accident is there, if any fracture is there in, the, in our bone, okay, any hairline fracture or that, what we do is we go to the uh, 
the doctor and he suggests that you do uh, some x-ray, uh, you have to go to some x-ray machine and f do take a, uh, take a photograph of that bone okay, and from that he will be able to find out if there is any hairline crack or micro crack is there in the bone and of course after that it uh, plaster has to be applied. Okay. So, that technique is already being used uh, and we have seen very, you must have seen uh, frequently around you that uh, this is the technique to find out flaws in the bone, maybe due to some accident or so. The same thing can be used in materials also that I can use radiography okay, or use x-rays to find out if there are any flaws present in the material. Okay. So, basically if this is the component and there is a flaw, you are exposing this material to x-rays and there is a x-ray film behind it. So, wherever the flaw is there, my absorption of x-ray will be less in that region. Okay. So, that will affect the film more. So, it will appear dark here and the rest of the part which is affected more by the x-rays okay, that appears light sorry in this part uh, the x-rays are absorbed more so it will be affected by x-ray less okay so that appears light and so on so this is the less exposure and this dark region is more exposure because there was a flaw there so there was no material to absorb the x-rays okay and that is how you can detect it in, in humans also the bones are dense okay if any flaw is there then that means there is hardly a, any calcium or any a bone is there okay so when you expose this to x-rays okay the absorption of x-rays will be lower wherever the flaw is there okay so that can be noticed on the x-ray film because the exposure of x-ray film will be more wherever the flaw is there and exposure of the film will be less wherever there is no flaw because x-ray absorption will be more by the material. So, this can be used to find out any flaws in the material. Okay. Now, these are these were the uh, NDT techniques and now uh, we will come to the uh, another part, uh, okay. one of the measurement which we could not cover earlier in uh, mechanical properties that is the hardness. Okay. This can also be kind of you can consider a non-destructive way of finding out the mechanical property because you just put a indent, uh, indentation on the surface okay, rather than doing a tensile test uh, to find out what is the uh, uh, mechanical properties of the material. Okay. Of course, it is not a very good quantifiable way, but if you want to compare the suppose material with different uh, heat treatment. Okay. So, rather than doing tensile test for each heat treatment, what you can do is you can find out quickly that how the hardness of the material is changing and that will give you some indication about the strength of the material okay, or flow properties of the material. So, the hardness if you see can be defined as resistance to deformation. Okay. So, uh, it is part of the mechanical uh, properties only. And uh, through how it, it is measured through indentation. So, you have to have an indenter to measure the properties. So, the first uh, idea which was proposed to find out the hardness was a 10 millimeter diameter steel ball, okay, kind, uh, you press it in the material. Okay. So, the impression which it creates on the material will give you the indication of the hardness. So, if it is hard material and when I press this steel ball, it will give you a smaller uh, impression. If it is a soft material and I press the steel ball with the same load, okay, it will give you a bigger impression. So, you can at least find out which is the soft material, which is hard material. So, indentation is, so first one to propose is uh, what we call as Brinell hardness. So, indentation in this is done with 10 millimeter diameter steel ball with a load of 3000 kg okay, or for a softer material you can reduce it to 500 kg and that is applied for 10 to 30 seconds. So, you take a steel ball uh, press it uh, using this much load for 10 to 30 seconds. Diameter of the indentation is measured to obtain the hardness. So, whatever is the diameter. So, if a steel ball has gone 
too much inside the sur inside the material then you will have a larger impression or larger the diameter of the impression if it is gone for a smaller depth you will have a smaller uh, impression and low smaller size of indentation okay so this can be used to find out a uh, number which is called brinell hardness number bhn which is given by a relationship like this where p is your applied load okay d is your diameter of the ball uh, the capital d the small d is your diameter of the indentation so whatever impression is created okay and t is the depth of the impression okay so either you find out from this or you can find out from a relationship like this okay both ways it can be find out and this will be the units of the uh, uh, the brinell hardness number another uh, uh, measurement uh, for finding out the hardness is called rockwell hardness okay so in this type of test depth of indentation at a constant load is taken as the measure of hardness um, in this case you are now applying a much smaller load than what we did in a brinell hardness so 10 kg is applied for good contact between the indentation and the in the sample surface and then you apply a major load okay so first we apply a smaller load to to prepare a good contact between the sample and the uh, and the indenter and then we apply the major load to give a indentation and then it is recorded directly on a dial gauge in terms of an arbitrary number so this is not a you you will not have a unit here you, this is a arbitrary number to give you the hardness of the material so the dial gauge consist of 100 divisions each division representing a penetration depth of 0.002 mm okay so indenter is basically a diamond cone of 120 degree cone angle okay which is called a brail indenter and uh, 1.6 and 3.2 mm diameter steel balls are also used uh, in 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 case of rockwell uh, for finding out rockwell hardness so either you will use this diamond cone or you can use these steel balls combination of indenter and major ball load give rise to different hardness scale okay so there are different scales so this is arbitrary number so different scales are there to give you the hardness value so c scale takes the brinell indenter uh, with 150 kg load and it is designated as rc range of rc is from 20 rc values to 70 rc values used for hard hard material like hardened steel okay so for example in plain carbon steel martensite hardness will be expressed in terms of rc values because the hardness of the martensite is very high okay so the hardness of martensite will be expressed in terms of uh, rockwell hardness and uh, the scale will be taken as rc so around 65 to 70 rc values you get uh, in case of martensite the b scale uh, takes use steel ball indenter instead of the brail indenter and uh, load is around 100 kg and it is written as rb range of rb is from 0 to 100 rb values so minor loads in rc and rb scale are 10 kg and 3 kg respectively okay so the minor loads are 10 kg or 3 kg i think this should be rc here and this should be rb the scales are 10 kg and 3 kg respectively another hardness measurement is called wickers hardness okay which uses a square based diamond pyramid so instead of cone now you have a pyramid a square based pyramid okay so you will have uh, basically a square base of the pyramid will be like this and then you have okay if i look from the top it will look like this the angle is around 136 degree between opposite faces of the pyramid wicker hardness a vhn is the load divided by surface area of the indenter so area measured from microscopic measurement of the length of the diagonal of the indentation so in this case the indentation indentation which we do is of a very small size so we have to see it through some microscope that what is the size of the indenter so we don't want to alter the the surface too much so that is why we use wicker wicker hardness test to 
create a very small indentation on the surface of the sample okay and that can be seen only through a microscope that what is the size of this indentation so the wicker hardness number value can be find out by a relationship like this okay so where p is your applied load l is the average length of diagonal so you will have uh, on uh, impression like this okay in the material because you have introduced the indenter so what is the length of this diagonal okay that will give you the uh, this l theta is angle between opposite faces of diagonal which is what we are taking as 136 degree okay so if you put 136 degree here theta by 2 it will be i think 68 sin 6 of 68 and multiplied 2 will give you this factor 1.854 so i can be, once i know the indenter angle i can replace this okay by uh, uh, value like this depend into p divided by l square okay so this will give you the uh, wicker hardness which which uh, kind of uh, does not change the surface too much okay you will be uh, you have to see this indentation through the microscope okay so these are the three hardness values uh, or hardness measurement uh, i just wanted to introduce you to to you okay because one of the very important ways to find out the mechanical properties of a material quickly okay so you don't have to keep on doing the tensile test every time and then you can find out the candidate material for which you want to do uh, detailed uh, mechanical property measurement okay so with that i would like to thank you for and we will discuss the electrical magnetic properties uh, and composite ceramics and polymer composite in the coming lectures thank you